Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Welcome to another show. So today we're going to be talking all about the 2022 Ford Maverick, the 2022 F-150, and of course the 2022 Bronco. So I've got a whole lot of good news to share and actually great news. And I have a little bit of bad news to share. So it always helps wash away the pain. Maybe not the best habit but uh, definitely helps wash away the pain. So good news, bad news. Basically what we're gonna be covering today is, you know, we're gonna be looking at the Maverick, your must know information on the Maverick. So that means, you know, what is gonna slow down your order as well as when are those hybrids being released? And of course, for Maverick and Broncos, we will talk about, you know, I'm gonna work to answer the question to in, in a general sense that helps everyone understand when they're gonna get their Bronco or their Maverick. We're also gonna talk about F-150, some really cool changes to, you know, for 2022, some stuff you should really watch out for that's gonna be pretty incredible, as well as a little bit of bad news on the F-150 front, a little bit of bad news on the Bronco front, of course. We'll be able to figure out, you know, whether you're waiting on an F-150, a Bronco, or a Maverick. I'll be covering that and helping you figure out when you should be getting your Bronco because you know, there's basically a formula that you can follow. You ask a few questions and you'll have a pretty darn good idea. Now, we're also going to be talking about how you can get a free Maverick. So uh, a user, uh, one of the users on the channel, the community members, uh, put in some really great info and it's, you know, probably the best justification I've ever heard. He, his wife will probably let him buy a Maverick, even though it seems from his post that he doesn't really need one, but he figured out how you can get a free Maverick and I'm going to be sharing that with you because I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, we're also going to be, you know, of course, I will make it really clear the good news, bad news, maybe jump into that at first, but in the meantime, I'm probably going to get a comment that I'm wearing yet again an ugly Hawaiian ish shirt well you're just gonna have to deal with it uh it was 26 degrees celsius here and we're in october in canada so that's some pretty incredible weather uh pretty unusual uh because it's gonna get darn cold tonight so that's about 80 something degrees fahrenheit for uh all the american viewers uh which is pretty cool soon i'll be able to finally do the bronco off rodeo i can get that organized because it looks like in november the border will be open for some land travel so i hope to do that in new hampshire and i hope to get a date soon but let's just jump right into that maverick content because hey everyone from the channel seems to mostly most of the watchers seem to be here for the maverick content so we'll start with that then we'll be going back and forth between f-150 and bronco content any bronco viewers you're not going to want to miss out because i have some really great news and i'm going to put some bad news pretty clear in regards to colors and carryovers so good news hopefully will help us get through the bad news so that Maverick must know. Well, it looks like the Maverick Truck Club has said that they've come out and said December 8th will be the date that hybrids will be released. I am hoping it's going to be earlier than that um, because I've heard of people in, you know, October builds for the hybrids. Uh, I've seen with my own eyes, you know, that's community members sharing with me saying, hey, they've gotten an October hybrid build. And I know personally, I've seen with my very own eyes, Definite fact, first week of November for a hybrid build for my local dealership. So December 8th could make sense, you know, if they're going to hold on to it at the plant for a month or a little over a month, really a little over a month before they let it go. But that would surprise me. So I think they'd try to, you know, put a further date and hope to get to deliver better news. So I'm, th I'm hoping, you know, there's nothing official from Ford, but I'm hoping when Ford gives out the official news we're going to find out that these you know these horses ponies whatever you want to call them maverick cattle they're going to be coming out hopefully i'm i'm speculating and i'm hoping mid-november but that i've got nothing if ford hasn't given anything it just makes sense to me if you're building them in you know late october that you don't want to have them sitting around for weeks at end speaking of things that have sat around for you know weeks if not months at end bronco build so if you're a dirt mountain if you're a bronco person and your guy or gal and your bronco was on dirt mountain well you'll be getting that soon they're just plowing through those 
and uh, sorry, I was a little hot today. Um, you're gonna be getting your Bronco soon because they're just ditching those tops on site in the parking lot and driving the Broncos to get their tops fitted. You'll be getting a really nice top, hard top very soon. However, for those of you who are having your 2021 Bronco reservation turned into a 2022, I have bad news. So a little bad news. Your color isn't gonna carry over, and this is how why I'm tying F-150 uh, news into this. And of course, I'd love to, you know people who are interested in F-150 to follow me because I know like, I know a little bit about the F-150. F-150 colors, I can tell you, this week they're transferring 21s that didn't get built into 22. So my year, um, model year 2022. And those are getting transferred over. And if you have picked out a color, I've got the colors right here. The colors that are getting cut, you have to repick. And this is gonna be relevant because Bronco people, the same thing's gonna happen to you. So if you have an F-150 that is, you know, Kodiak Brown, Leadfoot, Velocity Blue, the color of my Bronco, my favorite color, um, other than the rareness of green, and it's kind of different, and I like to be a little different sometimes, but Velocity Blue, lead foot, that's gray. Kodiak Brown, that says it all. It's that shiny brown. And Guard, those are the colors that are gone for 2022 on an F-150. And if you have one of these colors and you're getting, you know, your 21 pushed and it's now gonna get built as a 2022, you don't get to hold on to those colors. You have to repick your color. And unfortunately, as of today, October 13th, the website's not up yet, so you can't see images of what the new colors are, but you can build on the 2021 website because, you know, most of the, there's no, nothing really new other than Atlas Blue. So build a 2021 F-150 to figure out what replacement color you want. And well, if you wanna see Atlas Blue, some Ford dealers will have Explorers in that color because that was the color for the Explorer ST. It is spot on, it's incredible. I've seen it on F-250 2022, pretty sure it was Atlas Blue that I saw and I absolutely, quite certain actually, and I absolutely loved it. So if you're, you know, if you're getting kicked out of Velocity Blue, consider At Atlas Blue. You can't complain, at least you still have a nice blue. And if you're, you know, a brown guy, Kodiak brown guy, not not too many options for you. You're stuck. You're getting nothing brown for 2022. So Bronco. If you have a Bronco and you're a 2021 or you're, you're waiting on your Bronco, I should say. If you're waiting on your 21 Bronco and it's being converted into a 20 22, which, you know, this week, if you don't have a date, a build date, you're getting pushed. Your dealership should do this on their own, but give them a call. Make sure that they do convert your 21 into a 22, especially if you need to change color. So if you're rapid red, rapid metallic red, that was a great color that no longer exists for 2022 Broncos. And of course, we're losing antimatter blue, one of my favorite blues it's fantastic, but it's gone. And it was actually really popular at a huge take rate. Bronco guys and gals jumped all over that color. Uh, it wasn't a whole lot of people's first, second, or third choice. It's gone. But, you know, Cyber Orange is available on all models, which is pretty nifty. And that is pretty nice. And I have seen hot pepper metallic red on a, a Maverick and it looks amazing. So there's that and you know, I can't complain. I've always wanted a green vehicle. I've never owned a green vehicle. They've got their eruption green. So not quite the same as, you know, I think it's gonna be a little different than what we have on the Explorer Timberline. I can't quite remember the name of the color on the Explorer Timberline, but from memory, um, it, was, it has a different name. Anytime Ford has a different name, you're gonna have a different code and you're gonna have a different recipe. So if anyone in the comments section wants to throw out what the Timberline um, color was, please go ahead. I can't quite remember it off the top of my head, but let's just move right along with the news. You know, I like to put the pedal to the metal because people always comment that my shirts are ugly, too bad, deal with it. Uh, and that, you know, I do a lot of blah, blah, but you know, it's a talk, it, it's talk, right? It's a talk show. So what am I supposed to do other than talk? This isn't a review. This is a talk, talk, talk show. So today we're covering the news. I got to talk, but um, you know, what can we do next? Well, I'll tell you what we can do next. In life, we can, you know, do our best to plan to avoid hardships. And when hardships hit us and things that bother us affect us, we can choose how we react if we can't change it. We can't change certain things. Miles well accept it and move on. 
and you know not complain at you know all ends of the day about it so if you're worried about getting your maverick late one thing you can definitely do make sure you don't have any of the late availability options so i've checked the most recent order guide this is like the the bible for a vehicle um, it lets you know really what's going on it's the bee's knees so avoid splash guards or mud guards if you prefer the things that you know go protect your your paint from scratch uh, rocks coming off the wheels so splash guards mud guards whatever you want to call them the nice molded plastic behind your wheels front and back avoid those avoid the bed tray liner i've said it in other videos i was half joking half not joking a cow mat does a great job and actually my whole garage i wanted to cover my whole garage floor in cow, cow mat but that was expensive so i had to go a little less on the rubber but don't get don't order from factory the bed tray liner so that rubber flooring avoid also the bed liner the plastic bed liner that's the hard drop in avoid that on the maverick that's going to cause you trouble trouble and the bed divider kit um, that's also a late availability so order all that from your parts department separately get your maverick without that stuff and of course avoid the cargo management system mounted bed crossbars so that's on the bed you've got the crossbars for you know putting up a kayak or whatever you might want to put on those crossbars and tie off avoid those get them from your parts department not the order of your maverick now speaking of the order of your maverick marie and i back in mid-july ordered a maverick it's a hybrid the main issue we've had a hybrid that was two months later, jump ahead of us, and we have the Lux package. But interesting enough, that Maverick had, it has a hitch and has a spray in bed liner. So I got, I have to think that while there could be some constraints, that's not the major issue that got us, you know, someone two months later jumped ahead of us. So something in the Lux package, if you're in a real hurry, you might want to consider just keeping your build simple if you can live without that stuff. So if you're really on the fence, you don't know, really know if you want to spend extra money or not, consider that. And speaking of spending money or not, you know the Bronco. If you're on the fence about your Bronco build and you want to get it as quickly as possible, you know, we all know the list, you know, avoid the 2.7 liter if possible, avoid the hitch, uh, of course, try to avoid Sasquatch, try to avoid Wild Track then, of course. So what are you left with? Well, you could go with a Badlands if you want an aggressive look, and actually it's a very, it's the most capable off-roader. Consider getting the Badlands. It has Bilstein uh, suspension, you know, uh, position-sensitive dampening shocks, so top-the-line shocks, really great. Won't get into that. I did a whole video on it. Um, it has the stabilizer bar disconnect that no other model has, but if you, you know, it's got a whole bunch of off-road stuff and even all the Sasquatch packages, including the wild track, don't have the rock protectors uh, at the bottom of, you know, just underneath the doors. So, you know, review your things. If you're going to go off-roading, highly consider the Badlands. It can help you get your Bronco maybe a little faster. You know, and if you can't live without a 2.7, don't. I can tell you the 2.3 liter with automatic transmission will feel smoother and faster than with a manual. I drove it with a manual, 2.3 liter with manual. Originally, my part of my dream build, two door, hard top, switched it all up, ended up going the extreme opposite end. But I can tell you, I'm not disappointed because I, for me, uh, I really like acceleration and I felt the manual 2.3 liter was missing a little. Now I've driven the Ranger with a 10 speed and that does it just fine for me. And you know, the Ranger is 4,400 pounds, my Badlands almost 5,200 pounds, so that has a bit to do with it, but the transmission definitely helps. So now I wanna share some really positive Bronco news. Really positive Bronco news is that, you know, my local dealer doesn't have any build allocations for December and that's really quite interesting because you know there aren't any conversion re re reservation holders being converted into early 2022s you know for example the people being pushed forward while they want a black top well that's not until 2023 if you want a painted black top on your hard top so it looks like Ford is going to be really working hard to pump out uh, print out of the factory push out of the factory Broncos for 
2021s who've been converted into 2022s. So I find that's really great news. Um, I've been saying it for think a few months that I was really hoping that's what would happen. I kind of expected that's how Ford would deal with it. I was also hoping that if you were a pushed 2022, that you'd get to keep your color if you had the rapid red uh, or the antimatter blue. But that was kind of unrealistic because I've never seen that happen in... Uh, at various at any manufacturer if you come across a story of someone that has done that well please share because i'll be very surprised but you know that's my bit of really good news and a little bit of bad news on the bronco good news on the maverick it, it is a ways out you know we've got another about another two months for the maverick hybrids to be released but i think they're going to be released before that that's i'd put my money on that I think they'll come out maybe two, three weeks early and we'll all get good news. But let's let's wait for official news on Ford's part. Now let's talk about, quickly before we get into the free Maverick, let's talk about the F-150 real quick. Things you want to look out for the new F-150. First of all, there's going to be a black package offered on XLT and Lariat, as well as Platinum. So finally, Platinums, you're not going to be forced you know, platinum shoppers paying a ton of money, you're not going to be forced into the brushed metal look. If you find that makes it look like a refrigerator, well, cool, you can have a platinum with black package, and you can have a lariat with black package, and you can have an XLT with black package. Besides the tremor, which will finally be available, I think this is going to be really popular. So I'm just going to go quickly share with you what's on that. So black appearance package, for example, if you get it on the XLT, you know, it, they say optional on mid and high. So I'm going to assume that's 301 or 302 packages and you can't have it with a four by two. So you need, you can't have it with a four by two, 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. I think pretty much everyone's getting at that point, if you're getting a mid level or high level XLT, Pretty sure you're probably getting a 4x4, but let's just look at it quickly. 20 inch gloss black painted aluminum wheels, black six inch angular step bar bars, black body side decals, yeah, decals, whatever. I'm sure they'll look a lot better than my stripes uh, on the Bronco. You're getting black exterior badging, so that's very cool. Black headlamp bezels on the 302 only so if you want your black headlamp bezels so you know behind kind of your lamp if you want all that looking black and great you'll need a 302 black interior appliques dual exhaust with black tips if you go with a 4x4 so that is very very cool 4x4 and 3.5 liter ecoboost engine you get dual exhaust with black tips so dual exhaust awesome uh, very cool very, very cool. Leather trimmed bucket seats with flow through console, floor shifter with 302. So wow, we'll finally, I think this is the first, we'll have leather trimmed bucket seats on an XLT. Wow, leather trimmed bucket seats on an XLT, XLT F-150 302. That is, that's huge. That is huge. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I kind of well, I'm still a Bronco guy. I won't even think about about an F-150, but hey, very, very cool. You get your matte black tailgate with an F-150 decal. Very cool. So tailgate, decal, F-150, blacked out. And you get a unique hood and grill with black accents. So all very cool stuff. You'll want to look out for that on the F-150. Now let's just jump right into, I believe it was Mr. Platter, Sam Platter. He explained to me, I think any of you can use this on your partner, whether you're a gal wanting a Maverick or a guy wanting a Maverick. Whoever your partner may be, if they're not on board, this is how you convince them. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. So, you know, get past just his little intro, being positive. Love it when people share positivity. He says, yeah, I ordered the Lariat Hybrid. Hopefully I will receive it by spring. Ha ha ha. Well, I'll talk to you all about allotments and how that might actually be the case. A couple of main reasons are as follows. Currently driving a Yukon Denali that I love. So keep in mind, this is how he's getting a free Maverick. But hate the price tag over 80,000 K and with an average of 14 miles per gallon. Really not a good choice for an everyday driver. So I did some math that I am hoping you can touch on with a not so distant future episode. Yeah, I'll make that happen. You put stuff in the comments that's super interesting and I will jump all over that. The average consumer according to car studies and research keeps a new car 8.4 years. With that being said, let's just go with nine years, fair. 
I average 20,000 miles per year, uh, 180,000 miles after nine years. The Yukon at 14 miles per gallon will use 1,428 gallons per year. And at $3 per gallon, which in a lot of areas, I bet you're paying more. I know I'm paying more than $3 a gallon. It's like $1.39 a liter. So a lot of people are going to be paying four or five dollars a gallon, but let's calculate it out at three dollars a gallon like he did. He's saying that's going to equal four thousand two hundred eighty-seven per year times nine years, thirty-eight thousand five hundred and fifty-six dollars. This guy knows what he's talking about. He is thinking in dollars and cents. Very logical. Maverick, forty miles per gallon, five hundred gall gallons per year as a result, and at three dollars per gallon, fifteen hundred per year over nine years, thirteen thousand five hundred. He does the math, 38,556 minus 13,500. He's at a $25,000 total savings in fuel alone or $232 a month. That's a free Maverick XLT. The man's a genius. Lo I love it when people drop in super precise data-driven information and he has done a great job of it. Um, and you know what? He is saying that you know $25,000 over nine years is what he'll save in fuel. But, you know, maybe you have a slightly more fuel efficient vehicle, but you're paying four or five dollars a gallon. So you still end up with basically the same calculation. Or maybe you're just, you know, you have a, a vehicle that's doing 25 miles per gallon, but you pay five dollars a gallon. Well, you still come out with a ton of savings somewhere near the twenty thousand dollar mark. So that's how the Maverick can be free. And when you have great comments like that, please share them. And if you do write, you know, I hope you touch on this in a future episode. Well, expect that I will, you know, send you praise and uh, treat you like a, a car god or goddess. So please keep it up. Keep sharing with me so I can share with all of you. Now, there have been some articles coming out I find kind of interesting, uh, kind of no brainers like uh, the Maverick being a future icon yeah there because of all the interest yeah there's a lot of us people who are really passionate about the bron about the the maverick and you know the bronco and the maverick are definitely going to be icons uh i can tell you driving around in my bronco people bang on their windows people will be you know in other vehicles and like you can really see them reacting to the bronco and you know where i live broncos weren't huge in the 70s and 80s the way they were in a lot of parts in the united states so i can't imagine what kind of even more positive reactions people are getting in the states but i'll know soon hopefully that border opens up and i'll drive my bronco down for some bronco off road rodeo rodeo whatever um, in the meantime, I'd love if you add in the comment section whether you'd like my future upcoming videos to be a little bit of uh, Bronco off-roading. Uh, I'll have to speak to uh, the ex and see if I can jump on her farm. And I've said farm. I didn't phrase that very well. Uh, go to her farm and uh, do a little off-roading there and shoot shoot that footage for you and share You know, really how it kind of off-roads at higher speeds, jumping through a little bit of air in fields. Hopefully going through a little bit of woods. I haven't been to that new farm, so I don't know what it's like. I know my old farm was pretty awesome for doing some off-road. But let me know if you would like that or if you'd like more, you know, Maverick talk, Maverick coverage. I do have some escape plug-in footage I haven't done yet. So please let me know where you want the direction of this channel to do. I want to cover what you find is interesting. And in the meantime, uh, if I've been helpful, and I hope I have, that is truly my goal, because um, that's what makes me happy. That's what keeps this hobby going. Please like and subscribe. Uh, the channel actually does a little bit more than feed the poodle. So I'm not going to, I don't want to be called out and told I'm a liar. Uh, it's, it does a little bit more than pay the, the, the poodle's food. But please like and subscribe to help feed that poodle, which has been shaking his collar and scratching away at the bed on the side. I'm sorry about that. See if I can edit it out. But until next time, I wish you all more cars and more power. And I hope you get to put the pedal to the metal. Take care. Here I am signing off and I just checked my notes. So if you're, if you're still watching, uh, I will cover probably what's bothering people the most, the most commonly asked question. And I always end up writing like a couple paragraphs. When are you getting your Bronco? When are you getting your Maverick? Here's the formula. It is set in stone as long as you come across a dealership where the salesman is willing to go talk to the person who's in charge of ordering for the dealership. They'll know, they'll have a good rough idea. Heck, I have a good rough idea 
before my local dealership told me. I had a good rough idea of how many F-150 Lightnings they're going to get. It's simple. You take 15,000 F-150 Lightnings, if that's what's going to be built, and I think it's going to be slightly more. But you take that, you divide it by 3,300, you end up with 4.5 Lightnings per dealership, knowing that some dealerships are small and will get one, and some are quite large and will get 12. Well, maybe even 15 for really big dealerships. I figured my local dealership would get between 5 and 10. But it, they'll get slightly more than 10, which may, helps me believe that they're going to make, you know, they did talk about doubling uh, Lightning production numbers. So, and this is all to help you figure out the formula to figure out when your Maverick more or less or Bronco or F-150 is going to show up. So, you know, they're going to be getting a little more than 10. Based on the size dealership, that means I think year one F-150 Lightnings, they're probably going to make about somewhere between, somewhere around 22, 23, 24,000. Ford had talked about doubling production, but that wasn't for the first year. I think they uh, talked about 2023 instead of 30, they do 45. And I think it was 2024 instead of 40, they, they're going to do their best to get 80,000 produced. Now, for your for your Bronco, because it's simpler than the Maverick, so we'll go with the Bronco because hybrid mixes everything up. For your Bronco, if your dealership has you know, five Broncos being built per month. And you have a Bronco that doesn't have any constraints. Well, you might actually jump ahead of the list, but very simply put, ask them where you're, on, where you're at on the list. If there's 30 people ahead of you and they're getting five per month, well, you know how many months it's gonna take. Now keep in mind, if you have a simple build, so you're avoiding, you know, the commodity, the the, the parts and the pieces where there's much more supply, it's much more demand than supply. Like the roof, the 2.7 liter engine, which I ended up getting and jumped ahead of people. So I'd say more so the Sasquatch package and even Sasquatch package with soft top helps Broncos jump ahead. So the more, you know, naughty list, you could say, the more you're on Santa's naughty list, the less likely you're getting your present for, well, now I won't say Christmas, but you know, somewhat after Christmas. So try to avoid commodity issues. And then when we go to the Maverick, the same formula exists. If your local dealership says, yeah, we'll be getting about four Mavericks per month and there's, you know, 40 ahead of you. Well, it should theoretically take you 10 months, but here's the complicated part. Right now, they're building less hybrids than EcoBoost. Will they end up getting that to a 50-50 ratio? Possibly, and I'm hoping so, and I'm thinking so around Christmas or maybe just after December or January. Hopefully, they'll be at about a good 50-50 mix. If so, well, then, you know, if the dealership's getting two of each per month, you, you just need to know, unfortunately, you kind of have to ask them, well, what percentage of hybrids do you have? So if they have twice as many hybrids that got ordered, well, you're going to be waiting more than 10 months. If they have twice as many hybrids, you might, you know, and I don't think all that many people are going to be waiting 10 months. It's probably more like a five or six month issue, but definitely having a hybrid could push you back based on the percentage of hybrids they got ordered. Now, of course, I think a lot of dealerships probably got twice as many hybrid orders as EcoBoost. So keep that in mind and keep in mind that I don't think anytime soon we're going to be getting to, you know, 90% hybrid production in a month versus 10% EcoBoost. I think if we're lucky by December, we'll be at a good 50-50 split. And if so, keep in mind, you're going to get your hybrid, Ford's building hybrids, but it's going to take longer. But here's the good news. I am going to finish on good news. I promise the EcoBoost is getting fantastic highway mileage. Uh, you know, look online, look at other different people's videos. They, they actually provide proof, but you know, from the beginning before anyone had a Maverick in their hands, if I recall, and I have the notes here, I think I was talking about 7.1 liters per hundred kilometers on the highway. Just check my notes. So I'm not saying anything here. So for the EcoBoost, 7.1 liters per 100 on the highway and in town, about 9.6 uh, 9 liters in town. So better than expected, 
about one liter per hundred kilometers better than um, the EPA numbers. So the good news is people are getting good fuel economy and if you are someone that does mostly highway, at that point you might wanna ask yourself, what's the point of having the hybrid? The hybrid is only a little better on the highway than the EcoBoost. Now if you're doing a whole lot of city, definitely definitely worth waiting out for, um, for, for a hybrid. Same thing goes to your Bronco selection. If you want your Bronco faster and you're more impatient than you are wanting your ideal Bronco, and really if you're not gonna off-road, you don't necessarily need a Sasquatch package, you could just get a lift kit and 35 inch tires. You could have all the look, and if you don't need the locking front and rear axle, and you don't need the you know the 4.7 uh, drive uh, axle ratio in the back and the Bilstein shocks, because you're not gonna be doing some high speed jumping or rock crawling then you might just want to consider getting you know let's say a base or a big ben and throwing on uh, bigger tires and a lift kit and if you're thinking you might just do you know some off-roading once or twice a year and it's not going to be extreme off-roading i think the black diamond is a fantastic option and of course if you want a little bit of luxury you can always go outer banks throw on your big tires have your look and have you know standard uh, keyless entry and heated seats the outer banks for people that like a little comfort is the model for you so now this time for real i'm signing out hope i was helpful have a great week